What's up everybody, it's Mad Scientist, EA Sports Game Changer, HardcoreGamers.com. Welcome, welcome aboard to episode 12. Just finished the game, barely eked it out against FCS Pirates or whatever, <laughs> whatever they are. So let's look at some recruits, let's look at our board, see what's going on. Couple people have Lou Johnson. I like him. Six foot, two hundred pound, balance running back. He's got me listed as number one, or Oregon listed as number one. We only get ninety five bonus points though. That's because he doesn't like our play style. But I like his attributes: eighty one break tackle, ninety spin move, eighty eight juke move, eighty elusiveness. That's pretty good for a freshman. Don't like his carry though, carry D, but we're gonna have to work on that. This may be somebody we can groom and eventually move up to the starting lineup. So carrying 70, you know, he's got us number one though. Need a DT, so we're gonna keep this guy. Juwan Pope, this is a guy we need to take a look at. Now he is an athlete and with at least this year, you want to look at everything, man, and try to figure out what are they going to be. This guy, though, you clearly see that he's got 86 throwing power, 78 throwing accuracy. I didn't even see that at first because it's way down at the bottom. And with B speed, he could be one of our next starting quarterbacks. So what you want to do is definitely look at all the athletes and go through and search on throwing power, throwing accuracy, just to make sure that you're not missing somebody, all right? Some of these other guys I like for various things. Cornerback, Speedy. Marcus Sorrell, Speedy. John Casey, not that Speedy. Quarterback, not that fast, but throwing power B, throwing accuracy B, so we gotta keep them, we talked about that. So a couple of these guys, you know, their existence on this board is mostly because we don't know that much about them. And secondly, because once we scout them and we do, we might make a different decision. This guy, Damian Smith, negative 945 points behind. No way we're going to get this guy. No way we're going to get this guy. So probably should have did this before we did all the scouting, but... If he had some really crazy attributes, we might have decided to go all in with this guy and see if we can get him, but not worth it at this point. Steven Brooks, we like him, but minus 840 back, that's a lot. So we're going to get rid of him. Michael Robinson is out there a little bit. But we're getting good bonus points. Uh, so Ross Hendricks, he's he's away, he's away back out too. So just going back trying to look at everybody in terms of their projected lock cut off we don't want to be below that when the lock time comes we're fine right now but it just kind of lets you know how much work you got to do and how many points you need to advance or add all right so we got rid of that guy just a little bit too far back michael robinson hmm Now, it's not only looking at how far you're back, but looking at the teams in front of you. Like, okay, Stanford is good, but the rest of those guys probably can move up the line on top of them. Mike Rivers, we're gonna put some points on him. That Mark Christian, we like him. 87 speed. You're just scrolling back and forth this time looking at relative position. Got rid of Robinson. He was back 
you know, over 500 points. I really want to start narrowing down on people that I have a logical choice, a logical chance of actually signing. So it's kind of helped it, helped it, helped it scout it, like I say, just kind of going back and forth. But I'm more comfortable with these guys moving forward because they're they're within reasonable length in terms of my guesstimation right now. And I won't know until I do four or five different dynasties to kind of get an idea of how far behind I can logically be to make a jump into number one and actually sign these people. And every year is different. So now I'm just going back to the spark, seeing if I can add anybody else. Now that I've kind of gotten the board that I had situated because these first early weeks, what you don't do in the first week or two, you know, decreases the probability of you finding somebody and bringing them on later on. Not that you can't do it, you can still do it. But the later you wait, the more people or more teams are able to contact that person and that person gets swayed one way or the other way. So I'm just looking at a couple people. Is there anything that I missed? Looking, so doing a search on speed. And not every position is, is bound by speed. But I'm also looking at what teams are on these recruits boards. So if there are four or five it's possible you could jump on there and, and get yourself in a real good position. So I'm looking at how many points behind. Like right here, I'm you know, number two, but I'm 840 points behind. So it's not it's not all the time about what position you are, but how many points is all of that come together. Who's in front of you? Is it a human control team or is it CPU control team? So there are a lot of different a lot of different factors. So I'm just kind of scrolling through. Normally I try to select two players that are really are a reach. Like they're not interested at all. But these guys are so incredible, you just can't help but try to contact them to see if they're interested. But I don't do that a lot. I, I'm more conservative because I want to look at the teams that are interested. You want to come? I want you to come. You know, let's look. Let's look at what you have, and then we'll kind of go from there. Always looking at quarterbacks, but not that bad. One of the problems is that some of these guys I put on my board and forgot I put on my board and actually started looking at them again. And that's one thing that you really can't tell whether or not you've had somebody on your board before. You can, but then you gotta look and, and see if you had any um, scouting attributes revealed and then that'll remind you. But when I get real serious, I actually videotape every week. So I go back to the videotape and look and figure out how many points I put on, which is easy to do this year. But then see what that movement was. And you can track it over time. So that's one bit of feedback that I've been submitting to, to EA about recruiting is I'd like to see a change over time. Not only just one week, but all the weeks. So I can see sort of a line chart. Am I getting better or am I progressively getting worse? And I like to tell that, but you can't tell when you see just a snapshot of negative 200 points what does that mean i could have just moved up from 500 negative 500 to 200 to negative 200 so actually i had a negative I had a positive 300 point jump but i could also be negative 200 and last week i was positive 200 so you're getting a snapshot of somebody, you know, in an elevator, but you don't know if the elevator is going up and down. You don't know. You know what happened the week before, but the weeks before that, you really don't know. So I like to keep track of that stuff very meticulously. I'm not doing it this time around because 
it just would have taken this whole process a lot longer. So you have the videotapes, you can go back, you can track different people. I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna use this as a learning tool and look at some of the things I did and see how I can do better moving forward. And hopefully you can too and say, okay, he should have put more on this guy, more on this guy. So we added three players on the board and we scouted Bailey. Looked at Bruner, Bruner has his number one. He's kind of looking around right now. He's making some final choices before we sim. Well, I think that's gonna do it. On to week two. And on to episode 13. Stay tuned with the results coming up. Like, subscribe. Peace.